In this video, we'll do what my granddaughter calls is the lollipop pin. She actually picked this blank out and uh, thought it was very unique, very colorful. I was hoping that the pattern would go all the way through it after I turned it, but we put it on a simple click pin, Wall Street uh, 2 click pin, and uh, really I only had two things to press in, the nib screws on the bushing on the bottom and then the click goes on the top and I think I could probably get about two pins out of this we'll have to see but uh, we take it kind of look it over a little bit get the uh, tube cut and again I was hoping that this pattern would go all the way through uh, it's, it's very colorful and kind of unique, at least to, to us it was. Well, we squared it up, got it cut, and then we get it over to the um, to the bandsaw, get it sliced up. All right, sped up a little bit to get past this. Make sure we had it lined up and made nice easy cut, blank cut good. So my first indication on it was it's going to be a pretty good blank. As you can see, we got uh, two out of them and that one to me looked like the color went all the way through. This one looked like it um, it had quite a bit of the color also, so we chose this one, and we get it marked up, getting ready to drill, and as usual, uh, blanks aren't exactly square, so make sure you mark it four times, and you'll see two corners were square, and the other one went right there in the middle and took an automatic punch lined it up and then put a hole in it and then took it over to the drill press and we set it up on the drill press brad point which lines up perfectly with the hole that's made and put it in the vise and you can see how the it ribbons in the flute and uh, pieces of it come out in large chunks not powder so my first indication was this was going to be a pretty good blank no chips so we go get it and uh, get the tube glued in so we roughed up the tube I think it was 300 or 320 on the sandpaper and, uh, and sized it up, cleaned it off, used the um, plastic cup and a, a popsicle stick to uh, mix it up and again I always weigh these, gives me my best chance of success if I know the portions are exact so in this one it was eight grams for each one and then mix up the popsicle stick make sure you get the sides and the bottoms get it a good mixing then we take the blank make sure the blank fits a little snug is good put it on the, the uh, punch the official snap-on punch and I load up the blanks here I'll put a little bit on the end and then load it back up scrape the uh, excess glue off then I'll take some denatured alcohol on a rag make sure there's nothing in the tube make sure the tube is centered up and then sit and wait and we let the glue set up, you'll uh, see the 
or the epoxy, you'll see the epoxy turn color. It'll turn a real dark yellow and it'll get very hot to where you can't hold it in your hand. So I always wait until it's uh, that you can hold the cup with no problem, that it's cool to the touch, normal temperature. I usually uh, wait a few hours after that uh, and usually also wait to the next day just to make sure that it's set up and it's, um, and it's got its full strength. It's five minute epoxy, so technically should be ready in five minutes. But if you feel that plastic cup with the epoxy in it after five minutes, that thing is really hot. So I like to make sure it's set up and, and ready. So now it's done and let's take it over to the uh, sander and we'll make sure that it's squared up to the tube. Now on these click pin tubes, make sure that you just touch that brass tube. You get that brass tube too short, the click part's not going to be uh, correct. It's going to be uh, too long and won't work right. So here we take it over to the lathe, get it uh, set up, put it on the mandrel, get the tail stock up to it, don't need much pressure. All the pressure is on the uh, screw, the brass uh, screw that tightens up the bushings. And I start with a uh, square carbide tool. It's got a little semi-radius on it. And it starts taking the uh, edge off to get it round. You can see that the um, chips are uh, decent size. Nothing really big coming off, but it's not powder either. So my first indication when I start turning it like this is this is going to be a good blank to turn out. If they come out real powdery, it, uh, it can spell disaster if, if you're not real careful with it and slow down. Um, then we'll get this thing down to round, which is going very well. You see it's starting to get off a little more of the um, acrylic or the resin than just the uh, taking the uh, edges off of it. So the pieces are becoming a little more and starting to get a little ribbony. And when it's down, all the way down to uh, round, it'll start getting a little more. And we'll start seeing it. Yep. So it as it gets perfectly round, it starts coming off in, in uh, larger ribbons. And it was, a, it was a good blank to work with. Came out uh, really nice. Worked it right down to the bushings with no problems. And um, it was very smooth. You can see the ribbons are starting to get a little more right now. And the blank is perfectly round, it's starting to look good. This blank uh, really shined up pretty good too, had a nice, nice clear coat on it. And so you can see the ribbons are getting bigger and bigger, getting easier and easier to turn. And it looks really nice like that. And so we polish it up, I won't go through that. And then put it together it was pretty straightforward on uh, click pin. Again, there's only two things to press into it. Is that uh, bottom bushing right there and then the top click. And I put a piece of tape on the uh, clip to make sure that when I pressed it in, it didn't scrape or mark the blank. I think on these acrylic resin type blanks I think we're probably okay with it. Uh, probably have more of a tendency on the wood blank to do that but I just want to make sure. I'm trying to position it. The one side came out really good. The other side um, I don't know it, it didn't have as much detail on it as the one side did. 
So I'm trying to position it on how it would look when the pin's on the ground, or when the pin's laying down. So we get the bushing in, because it really doesn't matter how that is, because it goes straight in. Then I'm trying to size up where I want this one at. And I think, see, you can see that the other side of it is almost kind of not a lot on there. So I wanted to make sure that what showed up was the, um, was the real colorful part of it. So I think I finally decided where I wanted it to go. I've got a block with a, um, that I drilled a hole in it that fits on the shoulder but doesn't touch the um, click part of it that you push. So I don't put any pressure on that uh, part of it. Sometimes if you put pressure on that, it'll get cockeyed and uh, the transmission just won't work very well at all. But uh, here I try to get the, I make a mistake by tearing it out. Now I've got to get the inside of it out. And it doesn't help, I don't have any fingernails. So <laughs> I, it takes me a minute to grab a piece of it so I can get it out. <clears throat> I think here I finally get a hold of it a little bit and get it out of there. There it goes. I didn't want to use anything other than my fingers. I didn't want a chance scratching it, so I finally got it out. And we put the um, refill in it. Make sure you get it lined up right. You can tell just by clicking the pin like that. And then put the nib on it. Screws right in. Take the tip off. Yep. So you can kind of see that one half of the of the blank is really spirally and colorful and a lot of colors in a little bit of space. And then 180 degrees, it's kind of like just lines are there. So the pen turned out pretty good. Uh, it, the color really was uh, good on it. Would have liked to have gone all the way through, but really was satisfied with it. And of course the granddaughter loved it. So thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you uh, stopping in and watching the video. Uh, if you haven't, please subscribe and hit the bell because there's more videos to come. So keep in touch.